Greetings, my fellow food lovers and shopping thinkers. This is Open the Jewish Podcast. My name is Craig Transmitting from the beautiful Swampy Mango, South Florida. And today's day is Wednesday, June 5th, 2019. So let us begin. Good day with good day, my friends. Hopefully everyone's doing well. Just um actually in the hotel room right now in Dania. So what the hell? To me, outdoor stuff. I live in a camper. So I just like, do this once in the blue moon. Which is pretty cool. Relax, get a different environment. So I'm just hanging out. It's the morning. And, um, you know, looking through a few things. How one friend of mine sent me something about George Soros. Like I said, he's uh, begging. It came out in February. And the extradition... To Sweden, it's been dropped for Julian Assange, which is very good. I gotta say one thing in due time, this can be overcome. And uh, to be very frank, if the United States keep going to uh, backfiring, I mean, not backfire, but if they keep going to the extradite them, it's gonna blow back in their faces. I don't give a damn what John C. Demers has to say. Mini Benito of Attorney Generals of the DOJ. To be very frank. If he gets offended, who cares? So a lot of, so that's that's cool. I, so I'm I'm happy about that. And um still gotta pay attention about that new world order plan on attacking Iran. They want they still wanna push it. Of course you got John Bolton. That's Pathetic posture of his. Trying to be the tough guy. I'm the notorious. I'm the tough guy. I know what's going on. But I don't have the balls to fight in the front line. Yeah. I'm just wondering if he ever does seances for it to uh, speak to Zygmunt Brzezinski. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. So, um, enough of all that. Oh, one more thing, too. Even the governor of Virginia wants the common sense gun laws. He wants to put common sense. You mean tyrannical sense, to be exact. You folks want to trust the government? He's going to blow back in your face. And that's guaranteed. Especially when that time comes and you're going to complain, go, Government, please. I want you to wipe my rear end for me. Government, can I take a shower? Government, can I make love to my wife? Government, 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 can I use the toilet? Can I take a can I take a leak? Can I go online? That's what comes down to it. They want to make everything to privileges. Not natural born rights. There's a difference to those common sense, so-called common sense people. Much more than tyrants in disguise. All right, enough digressing as it is. Yeah, I was just um, scoping on a few things and uh, caught my eye last night about Scott Peterson. Looks like Scott Peterson is on a line in a criminal case. And it looks like there's a warrant for his, a warrant for a warrant has been a warrant been served as well. And um, and of course, the, let's, let's just check this out. So Scott Peterson's pension, eight thousand seven hundred two dollars a month, is on the line in criminal cases. Often this is by the Sun Sentinel. And so, um, and uh, this one here, this one, this one's article is by Scott Skyler Swisher, and looks like in Broward County, so it'll be everything from the Sun Sentinel. And like I said, some people may call him a shill. They had the pros and cons. Don't get me wrong, but when it came to the Stoneman Douglas massacre, they were pretty damn on target, and I give them that, especially when. Uh, school superintendent had the audacity to try to put them in contempt <laughs> on release of certain records. And uh, I'll, tell, I'll say this. It's not going to work. 
So it was very in intriguing, and um, and they're really on on, t on fire with this. And it says here, ex deputy Scott ex deputy Scott Peterson close could lose his eight thousand seven hundred two dollar monthly pension if he's convicted of felony charges related to his inaction during last year's Parkland shoot school shooting. Wiley reviled as the coward of Broward Peterson was charged with child neglect, culpable negligence, and perjury charges. Tuesday, for not rushing in to stop the massacre at Marjorie Stillman Douglas High School that killed 17 staff and students, revelations of Peterson's hefty pension led to a public outcry after the shooting. But former Governor Rick Scott concluded the state cannot lawfully withhold payment from Peterson, a 32-year law enforcement veteran. But he supports raising um, long rifles at the age of 21 without going through the proper protocol uh, as a constitutional ballot. That's Tim Hill's lackeys. Okay, I'm just telling you how doublespeak is. It's like exceptionalism. But technically, I'll just I'll explain. I understand Governor Scott's side as well. Don't get me wrong. So I'll just uh, say this here. State law allows for pensions to be stripped from officials who commit certain on-the-job felonies. A legal fight could follow if Pearson were found guilty. State laws list specific charges that result in a loss of pension, including embezzlement of public funds and bribery, but it also lists any felony offense committed with the intent to defraud the public or the public agency of the right to receive the faithful performance of his or her duty as a public officer. Interesting there as well. And um, I'll just proceed here before I jump the gun. Where, um, whether Peterson's charge will qualify if he's found guilty is unclear. The Florida Department of Management Services, which handles the state's pension system, did not return a phone message and email left late Tuesday. Peterson faced seven felony, seven felony charges of child neglect. The charge of perjury and culpable negligence are misdemeanors. Mark Heron. A Tallahassee-based lawyer said he need to do more legal research to say whether the charges Pearson faces could result in losing his pension. Heron re represent former Broward, Count, Broward Sheriff Ken Jenny in his pension fight, which went all the way to the state Supreme Court. Ultimately, Jenny lost his fight before the Supreme Court after serving 10 months for one count of conspiracy to commit mail fraud and three counts of filing false tax returns. Jared Maskowitz, a former state lawmaker who, rep who represented the Parkland area, tweeted Tuesday that Pearson could be stripped of his pension. I don't think anybody who stands by and watches what took place in Parkland without taking any action deserves a golden parachute, said Moskowitz, who now heads the state division of emergency management. State lawmakers filed a bill this year that would, strip, would have stripped Peterson of his pension but didn't, get, didn't gain traction. Pearson's attorney said the bill was unconstitutional because it would inflict injury on the former deputy without due process. So you see Article 1, Section 9 of the Florida Constitution. Considering the news today, ultimately it looks like he's going to be held responsible for wrongdoing, said State Representative Chip Lamarck, a Republican from Lighthouse Point. We don't want to reward people for that type of behavior. Well, I gotta say one thing. I see some of the stuff you vote on, Triple Marker. You don't, you don't deserve. You don't deserve. You don't, you shouldn't be rewarded either. I'm sorry, I just slipped my tongue there. Bar Commissioner Michael Adain called the charges a step towards Peterson being stripped of his six-figure pension. Peterson started receiving his pension in April 2018 after he resigned his post on um, February 22nd, 2018. According to the Department of Management Services, he can receive the payments for the rest of his life. Even though Peter, even though Peterson resigned, the Broward Sheriff's Office terminated him Tuesday. An administrative action that will result in his record showed he was fired. He'll also be unable to collect unused sick leave, and an agency an agency spokeswoman said the Sheriff's Office referred questions about Peterson's pension to the state. The 56-year-old Pearson was paid $101,800, 
2017. $75,673.72 $75, in base salary plus overtime and other compensation, according to Sheriff's Office records. Until the shooting, he was considered a trusted school resource officer at Stoneman Douglas, according to an annual review to his performance. He was eligible to retire from the agency in July 2010 when he had 25 years of service. Interesting there because um, expect expect a few things on this area because um, I know he is called the Bro a coward of coward of Broward. And of course, even with this perjury, corn is it, is it near perjury? Let me see. Yeah, I believe so. In here, they're going to be using some documents pertaining to the Stoneman Douglas Safety Committee report. That's going to be that's going to be interesting. And of course, you're going to expect the um, one case of the, uh, the sovereign immunity tort liability, which is uh, Florida Statute 768.28, and the, the, one of the court cases, which it was, a couple of folks did try to sue the um, Broward Sheriff's Office and, and the, and the Broward um, School Board, of public schools, for not protecting students got shot down because they weren't they weren't op, they weren't liable. A, a case like that, and Wong, the case of Wong versus the city of Miami. So it's going to be a, a complex case. I'm expect it's going to be. I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to be here for a while. It's not going to be instant fast tracking because they got a bunch of garbage uh, cases, victimless crime laws, all that, just clogging the clogging the clogging the um, the Rolodex on here. But I'm going to continue on with Scott Peterson. It says here, I hope they make his life as miserable as possible. Parkland parents jeer former cop Scott Pearson after his arrest and school shooting. This is by Tanya Anna Lenz, and it came out June 4th, and this one actually came out 9.24 p.m., and I just and I apologize if I didn't say on the first article, June 4th, around 7.35 p.m. So I'll continue on here. With every second counted as students were, scanned, were screaming and dying in their classrooms, School, safety, school security officer Scott Pearson hit rather than respond. His inaction resulted in his arrest on charges of neglecting his duty. The extraordinary case of a cop charged with failure to act could land Pearson in prison for up to 97 years, though some experts warn that the charges will be difficult to prove. Pearson was the closest person to the gunman during the massacre at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School and likely the only one who could have interviewed when a 19-year-old former student gunned down 17 people on February 14, 2018. While there is a little time anymore to save 11 people murdered on the ground level, authorities believe Pearson could have saved people on the third floor if only he if he had tried. 10 of the 11 criminal charges, a 56-year-old stem from killings and injuries that happened on the third floor. The remaining charges accuses him of perjury during a sworn statement to investigators. For taking cover rather than confronting the killer, Pearson has been branded a coward, nationally heckled and vilified. He should rot, that's how I feel, said Fred Guttenberg, whose 14-year-old daughter, Jamie, was on the third floor when she died. My daughter was, 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 the one, was one of the last to be shot. My daughter absolutely could have been saved by him, and she wasn't. Jamie Guttenberg was shot in the spinal cord as she fled for her life. Had she had one more second, she would have been saved, Guttenberg said. I hope they make his life as miserable as possible. Also on the third floor is geography teacher and cross-country coach Scott Beagle. If Scott Pearson had done his job, my son would be live today, said Linda Shulman, Beagle's mother. 100% what he had done son. He had done something. Active shoot. The active shooter would not have it made it to the third fl third floor. He he had done his job instead of standing outside like a coward. Pearson was arrested after the Ministry of Discipline here at the Sheriff's Office headquartered on Broad Boulevard in 
Fort Lauderdale. Interesting. So it happened right in uh, at the station. He was booked into the Broward Main Jail on seven felonies and four misdemeanors, including child neglect, culpable negligence, and perjury. He also was fired by Sheriff Gregory Tony. Hmm. Interesting there because he resigned. Now Sheriff Gregory Tony, um, he resigned. He resigned was it February twenty second, and 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 Sheriff Gregory. Sheriff Gregory Tony came in around January 29th, January of this year. So it's going to be a possible battle in that aspect. That he was right, he was fired, he was right, he was fired. So right there, the, the, so expect the defense attorney to contest that. And and don't be surprised if that if that will go in Pearson's favor. All right. Criminal um, Peterson's criminal defense attorney was aghast as his uh, client's arrest on spurious charges that lacked basis in facts and law and called them to be dismissed immediately. The state's actions appear to be nothing more than a thinly vile attempt at, at politically motivated retribution against Mr. Peterson, said to attorney Joseph DeRizzo, Fort Lauderdale. He said the individuals who have made this charging decision have taken the easy way out and blamed Mr. Pearson when only when there was has only ever been one person to blame, Nicholas Cruz. So, so he has this. You could say that he has a point there at with that with this with this blame the suspect for taking those certain actions. However. Can it be? Can it could it have been encountered? Absolutely, in good faith. Sentiments from the other parents whose children, her children, were murdered, echoed one, one, uh, one another in praise and decision to arrest and laminate that, that, that it was about time. My heart's just beating because we're over a year here, and, and this is just now happening," said Gina Hoyer, the mother of fourteen-year-old Luke who died in the shooting. This is long overdue. It's been a long time coming, said Andrew Pollack, whose daughter Meadow, 18, was killed, also on the third floor. Accountability is all I wanted, and now it looks like it's happening. He needs to go to jail, and he needs to serve lifetime in prison for, go for not going in that day and talking, talking down the threat that led to the death of our loved one, said Lori Alhevniff, whose daughter, Elisa, 14, also died that day. It was his duty to go into that building and in, and to engage the threat, and he froze and he did nothing. Pearson, as arrest comes after 15 months investigation by the Florida Department of Law Enforcement and the Broward State Attorney's Office. The investigation showed Pearson refused to investigate where the gunshots were coming from, retreated during the gunfire as victims were being shot. Did not move from his hiding place for 48 minutes and directed other law enforcement who carried on the scene to 500, remain 500 feet away from the building. FDLE spokeswoman Jessica Carey said in an email statement, There can be no excuse for his complete inaction and no question that his inaction cost lives, said FDLE Commissioner Rick Sarigan. A state, a state commission investigating... The school shooting was highly critical of Peterson in his report earlier this year. Bob Galaturi, chairman of that commission, said Tuesday at a meeting at Sunrise that Peterson's refusal to testify before the commission last year, even though he had been subpoenaed, speaks volumes. I said it goes to his consciousness of guilt, Galaturi said. Galaturi said. Peterson sold his home in Boynton Beach in January and bought a place on Seldom Scene Lane in Murphy, North Carolina, record show. His bond has been set at $102,000. Also fired by the sheriff Tuesday for neglect of duty was Sergeant Brian Miller. He has not been charged. He was the first supervisor on the scene arriving in time to hear three or four shots. Rather than rush in or take command, Miller was an absolute total failure, Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd said at the commission meeting 
last year. Miller d dilly, um, dilly dally while putting on his bulletproof vest and then hid behind his car without going on his radio for 10 minutes according to the commission report. All right, we'll continue on here. We cannot fulfill our commitment to always protect the security and safety of Broward County community without doing a thorough assessment of what went wrong that day, Tony said. I, I am committed to address deficiencies and proving the Broward County Sheriff's Office. The investigation included 184 witnesses inter witness interviews, reviewed countless hours of video surveillance, and resulted in 212 investigative reports. And more than 800 hours of investigation, Kerry said. Senator Scott held his own directive calling for FDLE to investigate the failures in Broward County last year. Had his individual, had this individual done his job, lives would have been saved, Scott said. Actions or inactions have consequences. We need more accountability that includes at the FBI, which has yet to show a single example of how they've approved their process is following the failures in the lead up to the Parkland shooting. Interesting there. So, um, but hey, you have to look at those areas. Always have to look, examine those areas. And based on their investigation, in due time, he's a suspect in these particular charges. I'm gonna add. Well, I got. I'm gonna. Add, I'm adding the, the the warrant for his arrest on here as well. And I'm just gonna say something. I'm look at this for a moment. It's 41 pages long, but it it, it, it states right down here that the exemptions are public disclosed records. Victims' rights, witness to murder. So, and they have it. They have it right here. His arrest warrant. And uh, this is like you know a lot, a lot of pages. You got him. This is that says right here. Scott Ralph Peterson did engage in the one neglected child of a child in violation of Florida statutes FS 827.03 and 827.01. So they got him on that. They got they got two counts of that. They got him culpable negligence and perjury. When not in the official proceedings, they got him on perjury as well. So um, uh, I will do that. Leave that all in here. It's like forty-one pages long. It should have did a better job on um, scanning. <laughs> That'll happen when you rush, folks. You gotta be patient. But that will be kept in there. Just to uh, let you folks can read it for yourselves. And don't worry, it will all be on my footnotes. On my Spreaker page. And right here. Let me see. I think I, I, let me see here. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I like the same photo. Or same video. Shoot. Legal experts agree that Pierce, Scott Pearson failed. Whether he can be convicted isn't for isn't so clear. And it came out 9.37 p.m. on June 4th by Andrew Boriga and Lisa J. Harish. Harish? Yeah. Charges against ex um, bar Deputy Scott Pearson left many people feeling vindicated, but experts said it would be a uphill battle for prosecutors to actually convict Pearson of the seven counts of neglect of the child and three counts of culpable negligence. To those to make those charges stick in the possibility present a case, the state must establish Pearson as a caregiver of the students, prove he exposed them to harm through his inaction and prove that he did so as a result of reckless disregard for human life, according to Florida stat um, according to Florida law statutes. Matthew Mayer, a professor at Rutgers University who studied violence in educational settings, said, although many might agree Pearson had a moral duty to go inside the building as a child were being shot, charging Pearson under the assumption 
that he could have made a difference in the loss of life rests on him being the correct place at the right time and getting there successfully and firing shots. That is 100% speculation, Mayer said. Meyer said, excuse me. What's more, it won't be easy to prove in the court of law. Now, perjury count is a different story. Perjury is perjury. Perjury is perjury is perjury, said H. Scott Fingerhut, a law professor at Florida National University. If they can make that case, they will prosecute it. Fingerhut believes the perjury charge could serve as an interesting linchpin for the rest of the charges, which said he normally wouldn't otherwise be brought in tandem. Brought in tandem. It's a novel approach, said Fingerhut. In 25 years of teaching and practicing law, he has never seen charges as he is against an officer. But this isn't just any case. It is one that has drawn national attention and one that many want answers and accountability for. If you're going to take a shot in this case, take a shot, Fingerhut said, especially if you have a perjury charge that is solid. Although it's hard to fault Peterson for the killings on the first floor of the building, which happened quickly, prosecutors believe Peterson had the time to stop or at least engage with the shooter on the third floor. The warrant for his arrest also notes that Peterson attended over a dozen active shooter-related courses, including one in April, 20, April 2016, in which one of the objectives was for participants to be better prepared to respond to an active shooter incident. It's interesting because it is that, um, you know, I'm going to continue on here. Sorry, I just smack me later. Remember, every time when you hear a gunshot, when you get gunshot, la language from the training read, you, ha you have to believe that is another victim being killed. For the evidence of his negligence, prosecutor said, is at the time of the shooting, Pearson was an instructor for the Broward uh, Public Schools active killer course. Hmm. Okay. Eugene O'Donnell, professor at John Jay College of Criminal Justice and former New York Police Department officer and police trainer, believes training is different from how officers react in the midst of a scene, such as the one Peterson confronted on the afternoon of February 14, 2018. Criminalizing someone for an acting in the middle of a mass murder is built on a preposterous notion that police officers are Navy SEALs in disguise that can spring into action, O'Donnell said. You never know what you're going to do when bullets start flying. O'Donnell said he could um, understand how Pearson might lose his job as a result of his conduct during the shooting, but he believes charges such as these are an effort to respond to public outrage. This is headhunting. This is a trying to make someone pay for a tragic series of events. Pinellas County Sheriff Bob Gotori, head of the state commission investigating the shooting, see things differently. Scott Pearson is a coward, he is a failure, and he is a criminal. Goldie said in response to the charges, no doubt he didn't act, people were hurt, and people were killed. Joseph Gadea, an expert for witness for police-related court cases for NYPDTruth.com and a former New York City police um, officer, agreed. Although Gadea has never heard of a police officer being prosecuted for not doing his job, he also has never heard of an officer waiting outside during a mass murder. I, I, am, I always thought Peterson should have been prosecuted because your job as a police officer is to run toward the danger, Kadia said. When you, when you won't do that, you are actually a coward in shirking your duties and responsibilities. Being hurt and Meyer believe the opinions like these, which they both agree with on an emotional level, won't necessarily hold in court. We we don't know what his lack of action legally caused, Fingerhut said. What we think morally is one thing, but our criminal justice systems are based on legal liability or guilt, meaning what can be proved. If perjury can be proved, Peterson can be punished up to one year in jail and, and $1,000 in fines. If convicted as charges, Everything on his warrant, Pearson could face a maximum for nearly 97 years. The reality of a last situation is far from a slam dunk. You got the common sense case here, but I don't know if you have a legal case, Meyer said. And that is, um, 
Very good point, pointers. Very good, pro uh, very good pointers here. So it was one of those areas you have to really um, observe and see things a lot more. This, this case may be 10 years from now. All right? Because based on the legal system, what's going on. And Broward County is just an example of a cluster. And the headhunting is nothing new either. Because... Um, if you study the Lizzie, Borden, the Lizzie Borden trial, up happened in the late 1800s, and she was accused of axe murdering both her parents. Everyone went up in arms, went on a high tirade. When the grand jury indicted her, they were going off the wall. Then when the trial was occurring, there was no, not enough evidence. Found not guilty. The town was shocked. So in good faith, Scott Peterson is presumed innocent until proven guilty. They may win on one of the charges, perjury. But the rest of them, they have to prove with a, be beyond a reasonable doubt. However, they can get him where it hurts. His wallet. And that's one thing that could really affect somebody and drive them crazy. Do one more here. Pertaining to Parker. This is actually Tolman Douglas related stuff. The Promise Program. Hope I can get this. Interesting. This came out 5 49 p.m. by Scott Travis and Megan O'Max. Their MS Commission slams Brower Schools on Promise Stonewalling. The school board district is undercutting law enforcement by withholding information about students involved in a controversial promise program, says members of a state commission investigating the school massacre in Parkland. Members of the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas take the commission blast to Tuesday, to Tuesday for secrecy and conflicting statements regarding promise, a program that provides alternatives to arrest for students who committed misdemeanors. A new state law passed after the shooting requires that children who go through pre-arrest diversion programs must be entered in the state database. To avoid that, as the Florida Sun Sentinel report last month, this district has begun calling promise and an alternative to external suspension program, not diversion program. The reason of officials don't want students to accumulate a track record that could later land them in jail. If your lawyers are sticking with this, with this uh, supposition, that the promise program is not a diversion program. At the same time, you're diverting criminal conduct. Go back and tell them to figure out their opinion correctly. Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd, a member of the commission, told Chief Academic Officer Dan Gall on Tuesday. The school district's uh, general counsel, Barbara Myrick, said in a memo March 15th that a diversion program has a specific definition under state law. She cited a police-issued civil, civil citation as a type of state-defined diversion, as well as programs requiring a child to surrender a driver's license and neighborhood restorative justice programs. It is clear that the Promise Program did not meet the situation, the statutory definition of a diversion program, and therefore, a student's information data regarding participation in the Promise Program should not be entered in the, the, the Department of Juvenile Justice Information System database, she wrote. Commission member Ryan Petty, whose daughter Aliana was killed a Stoneman, on Stoneman, a Stoneman Douglas on February 4, 14, 2018, 
accused a school district of a culture of secrecy regarding its discipline practices and hostility toward law enforcement. I don't believe our school districts recognize its responsibility to keep kids safe or take it seriously. Petty Togo, we are not the you are not the Vatican. Oh. Several school board members said they would share information only if they could be assured that it would increase would it increase the students' likelihood of arrest. McGall said Tuesday that the district is revising its computer systems and discipline rules to ensure student crimes are shared but other disciplinary infractions are not. We are doing everything we want to collaborate in the proper way, Gall said. We will comply with making sure our workers are available. However, Maria Schneider, an assistant state attorney in Broward, said the school district has gotten worse about sharing information. The district used, used to have an agreement to alert state attorney's office when a student participates in promise, but that expired last year and the school district isn't turning over any information, Snyder said. She voiced concerns about the district's mixing criminal and non-criminal behavior into the program. When she, when, when she said, gives district an excuse to withhold information, state law doesn't require non-criminal discipline to be shared. The school district has argued that federal privacy laws prevented it. Snyder said when the attorneys, uh, state attorney's office signed on to the Promise Program in 2013, it was only for misdemeanors, not other types of discipline. Somehow, during the course of the implementation of this agreement, school board unilaterally decided that they were going to include all disciplines, issues, and promise. She said, they have the right to do that, but unfortunately, it creates a lot of confusion. Gold said the district has proposed limiting participation and promise to students who commit only misdemeanor offenses. Schneider was alarmed to learn that a Stoneman Douglas killer was sent to promise but failed to complete it, but was never referred to the state attorney's office a violation of the district's agreement. The district has never explained why that happened. Stoneman Douglas Public Safety Commission concluded that the Promise program had no direct tie to the massacre, but Commission Member Max Satcher, uh, yes, Hatcher, whose son was killed, was whose son Alex was killed at Stoneman Douglas, said Promise is part of a monument that will allow killer the killer to commit numerous offenses such as bringing bullets to school and making threats, but never getting arrested. It created a culture of leniency, in my view, in the view of many on the commission and the public, that led to the murderer accumulating all these instances of disciplinary actions, and you're doing little do nothing, Chaster said. That's what Scott Travis wrote. I think the Promise Program's a total sham. If I'm correct, it was a federal program that needs to be terminated. More of federal government overreach, as far as I'm concerned. I don't know a lot of you folks may not know or not, but in good faith, I see it that way. This should have been prevented a long time ago. You got folks believe government knows best, it turns to crap. Garbage. Defecated material. A lot of good people suffered from this. And I'm damn proud to say I, I do support the Guardian program. I disagree with um Sheriff Tony said teachers shouldn't be armed. But when I read about the, when I look at the, some stuff in the Guardian program, they got to earn it. Don't just can them something. They got to earn it. But everyone can do their part. The Guardian program doesn't mean you have to have a firearm. But the ones that want to do it have, because they do give damn about their students more than these clowns, the school board. And guys like Scott Peterson and his cowardly lackeys. I'm sorry. I just get a little bit damn ticked off. This is just an example of what I see. All this politicizing, witch hunting, 
is backfiring. That's why everyone needs to be vigilant when it comes to government. Whereas the school board, the commission, state, Local, don't matter federal, across the board. Never, ever try to attempt to believe, leave all your security eggs of the, in the hands of them. You'd be stepping on your own bear trap. I hope to have justice for all the beautiful people that died, suffered, because you tra- traumatized. Stay strong, Douglas, the students of Doug, uh, Stoneman Douglas, Broward County, the state of Florida, and beyond. Never, ever live in fear. We all have our moments, don't get me wrong, but don't let it control you. So those are the lessons I have to look about this incident and many others. And that is it. I'd like to thank everyone for listening. Plus, feel free to download and share us throughout your social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, or if you said something that's interesting you want to check out, whatever you do, please send your correspondence to the quorum. Plus, I'll leave all my footnotes, con- uh, social media contacts, and email addresses on my speaker page. Once again, thank you for your time. Plus, always remember that the maniac resistance is helpful for the soul and can liberate humanity. Until next time. Take care of yourselves. Keep on spreading the love. And may your guardian spirits be with you.